There's something I want to do, which is to articulate why my project on religious work is important. There's too much to say. I just feel like there's too much to say. But you gotta start, right? So I'll try to say that I think the ideas related to God are important for everybody. I think God, the word, really needs to not be hyper-focused on. I think even when I say divinity, that word needs to not be hyper-focused on. I think when I say, like, the good, that's not that bad of a word to focus on. The good is it's a good word. Um, but to me, the practice, the practice of religious thought not the intellectual discourse around religious thought, the practice of religious thought. And maybe this makes me a mystic in the, if you're talking about historical traditions. The practice of religious thought is for the shaping of the mind. And religious is not a word that should be hyper-focused on. The shaping of the mind. And so everyone needs to shape their mind. Everyone does shape their mind. We are all at the wheel of our minds, right? We are all at the helm and we are captaining the ship, um, you know, more or less effectively. And religious thought, contemplative thought, even philosophical thought um, has a role in all of that. Can have a role in all of that, right? And so in some ways, when I, when I talk to people who, who aren't, are not interested in the idea of God, um, and, and I should do more of this. I can do more of this. Um, you know, uh, but also religious people frequently really do not get this either. Like, I basically feel that no, nobody gets this, that there's this primary task of shaping what you are. And that can be done by anyone with any sort of metaphysical belief, um, at least any sort of endorsed metaphysical belief. Now, I'm a little touchy about this because if we're talking about endorsed metaphysical belief, um, what I mean by that is someone can be an atheist, say they don't believe in God, think that God is a superstition, right? Or they can be a theist and believe in God and think that God is real. And um, a lot of times when I talk about people's endorsed beliefs, I'm talking about like a very surface level phenomenon, a very, uh, when you're talking about the mind as a whole, a very surface level um, object. I think of it as a real object. People's intellectual views are real objects in their mind. They can be found and interacted with um, in the mind. And uh, some of these things are more surface level than others. Like there is mental architecture. I'm for, God, I've got so much shit I'm frustrated about. I'm frustrated about this too, because people try to act as though the mind doesn't exist. And um, you see this in all kind of intellectual work. It's like people haven't gotten over Skinner because Skinner at least b bit the bullet on, you know, at least as far as my understanding of Skinner goes, and it might be inaccurate, but at least Skinner bit the bullet on like, uh, you know, hard materialism. Skinner's like, there's just behavior and never mind these other mental phenomena. And so many brilliant people, you know, high IQ uh, motherfuckers are like acting in practice as though the mind doesn't really exist. Um, and anyway, so why do I call myself a philosopher? I call myself a philosopher because I don't have a better word to describe what I'm doing. And I think the word is not accurate in some ways um, because I, I, I'm not exactly a metaphysician. Um, a metaphysician is a person who is trying to solve problems of what exists in the broadest sense. You know, like doing cosmology is, is a sort of metaphysical activity and certain types of philosophy. I do some of that, um, but the way in which I'm a philosopher is much more what I'm led to believe is a more ancient Greek way of looking at it. I'm led to believe, whatever. I could be wrong about how all this works and deluded. Um, which is that philosophy is about shaping the soul, shaping the self. And I'm good at shaping myself. And I'm good at thinking about how to do that and what that means. And I want to transmit that power to other people. And the place to which it has led me is thoughts that seem very religious. And I am... It's a, it's a strange... It's a strange experience because I want to talk to 
the most brilliant people in the world, many of whom are atheists, and I want them to have the power to govern their minds and shape their minds to the unbelievable task of life, right? And um, in some ways, I'm, I'm not as frustrated about religious people because I'm not, uh, not really surrounded by them. I, like, know some religious people from Twitter and, like, I, whatever. I've met many in my life, but it, it's not exactly the, the peer group I found myself in. But I imagine that if I were, I'd be frustrated by something else. Like, maybe I would be frustrated by an inclination to superstition or something like that. Um, anyways, uh, anyway, I'm, I'm, um, I don't know if I got to my point here, but I'm experimenting. I'm trying this new, uh, I'm trying to just talk because I get in my head about, like, what I should convey and how and when and how can I, like, set it up right and be understood. But sometimes you just have to talk. Um, okay, bye.